Save me now, I save you later. In front of you, boys and girls, men and women, judges, my fellow proposers and opposers, is the great Ruben Mukonyumbolu from V. Kangumo High School, ready to propose the motion that states that financial literacy is a tool to eliminate poverty. First of all, we need to understand these words, financial literacy. I am here again to tell you that financial literacy are the comprehensive abilities to use skills in order to make sound, in order to make sound financial judgments. And not just any judgments, my fellow students, sound judgments. And now we are here to talk about ways in which proven ways in which financial stability can help in the elimination of poverty. Well, I can tell you for a fact that one of the greatest importance of financial literacy is that it equips one with knowledge to make informed decisions leading to greater money stability and higher quality of life. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know the meaning of poverty? I believe some of you don't. Poverty is a state of being poor. But poor, in your mind, maybe cannot click in immediately. But let me tell you the meaning. Poor simply means lacking sufficient money to live at a standard and comfortable life. Therefore, at this point of equips one with knowledge to make the informed decisions leading to greater money, money stability, simply means that with the, great, with the right financial literacy, one can be able to make informed judgments leading to greater financial leading to greater monetary value in the country and hence finan and hence poverty will be eradicated in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, debt, budgeting, saving and investing, the pillars of financial leaders, financial literacy can be used as tools to eradicate poverty. Well you know as in a country, our president takes loans from other countries just so that it can help it develop. The development of the country ensures us that we are not in that we are not poor as a country. Yes, we might be in the third world countries, but still aren't there developments taking place in the country? I believe that there are. Budgeting. Once we know how to budget, I believe that poverty can be eradicated. Because if you budget for a price, even when you're going to the supermarket, as an example, you budget on the amount you are going to use. So that at the end of the day, you know what am I going to buy, what have I bought, and what don't I need. Therefore, my fellow students, my fellow proposers and opposers, in front of you is a debater who is here to strongly propose the motion that states that financial literacy is, the, is, a, is a tool to eradicate poverty. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Posa. A wise person once said that poverty is not brought by lack of education. You are the one who you bring it for yourself. Standing here is Sophie Wanjiro from the from Kerene Girls, and I'm strongly going to oppose this motion, which states financial literacy can be used as a tool to eliminate poverty. As my colleagues say, my, that by benchmarking, we are able to, like for example, our president going to benchmark from other countries, we are able to, from developing countries, that we are, able, we are going to stop poverty. For example, China. Do you want to tell me that, in spite of him going to China, are we developing in a way? We are the ones we are seeing here that we are being followed by deaths here. So you want to tell me suddenly, abracadabra, jibariji, we are going to be like the other developing countries. They also started from the bottom. Another point to say by budgeting. Every year in Kenya, June, we usually have the CS of finance 
always going to budget there. But ask yourself, has our country ever benefited from it? Yes, they go and budget money. They say that school will be given this money, countries, what, counties. But let me tell you, we are sitting here. Some of us have gone home due to school fees. Then you want to tell me that through budgeting or through financial literacy, it's the only way to stop poverty. No. Let me give you some points. For example, some countries which are financially illiterate, such as Somalia, Yemen, Afghanistan, 15% of the Somalia, 15% of the adult, adults are financially illiterate. What about the, let's say, the 95%, the 85%? Do you want to tell me that it is still developing Somalia, but 15% of the people are illiterate? And you are Kenya, that 8% people are literate. And you are still not yet developing. And you are coming here to tell us that financial literate is the, is the tool to stop, to stop poverty. Prevention of children from child labor. For instance, a child is stopped from school. You are told you go home for school fees. Are you going to tell me that you are just going to sit there? Are you going to sit there? You know for small works. If we stop child labor, we are going to the children, we use their talents to stop also this poverty. So I don't find the point why we are making this difficult for our brains. No. Let us just oppose it. And there is this. Thank you. Second proposal. We have not refused that there are environmental factors. We have not refused that there are other several key factors that are stopping it. But you have seen it can be used as a tool. So you do not find how that point is valid. And we are talking about, and she started talking about development. Members of the house, we are not talking about development. We are talking about how it can be used as a tool. As a tool to eliminate poverty. So you do not even understand how she can say that is a point. According to research conducted by the Federal Reserve in 2015, it revealed that households with higher levels of financial literacy were better prepared to, eco to, to uh, receive economic downtowns, down downtowns and unexpected expenses. That is what our research has showed us. So let me tell you, according to the aims of UN on SDGs, if we are financially literate. We can use this as a tool to do what? To eliminate poverty, to have good health, to have quality education, and to even have gender equality. Let's look at countries that are not properly, who, which are not properly, which have not properly uh, developed due to lack of financial literacy. Let us look at a country like Somalia. If you go, and if you find, if you, if you actually conduct, if you go and search, it's, if you go and search, it shows that mo okay, basic knowledge shows that most Al Shabaab people are actually men. How is this fair? Because the men are being lied to, 
being put. Is this gender equality? I think not. Another research done by World Bank on 2017 demonstrates that the financial education programs tar targeted at low income. Let us look at a person like our own very president, Dr. William Samoyo Ruto. He knows very well that we are in a desperate time. Desperate time called for drastic measures. And that's why he's building houses. That's why he's trying to figure out a way of making a better country. A debt of nine trillion, how do you expect it to be solved in one day? There is no way you can expect me to go and benchmark today and tomorrow I make a difference. That is not possible. That is not possible. As I finish, I'd like to state that if you do not know the language of money and you do not have a bank account, you are simply a slave of economics. This is a scene by none other than John Bryant, the CEO of the thing. Bank Associate, Association Society. He is one of the most respected people and I believe he's telling us the truth. So that's why I believe that you should back me up in saying, in, oppo in proposing this motion that financial literacy is a key, is a, that is a tool to, to eliminate poverty. Thank you. A girl with legacy goes by the name Teresa Angel. Here, strongly to propose, to oppose, sorry, to oppose the motion that states financial literacy can be used as a tool to eliminate poverty. First of all, I'd like to correct you. Do not blame or accuse the devil for the four mistakes that we have brought upon ourselves. Second of all, Al Shabab. Al Shabab is something that it's like a crime. And here, it's like you're promoting women to do something that is not, is a crime, that is not good. That of all, I should be asking you the, this question. How can the one trillion be paid within a day? For example, you have said that through benchmarking, benchmarking, it will make us get out of poverty. How will it make us? I am supposed to be asking you that question because it is me who is opposing that motion. Okay. Financial literacy is not the only way that can make us get out of poverty. There are some ways. I can give you an example of a famous person you know, Bill Gates. He was illiterate. Not he started. He he was illiterate, but he is one of the richest people right now that we know, and can also he's one of the richest person that we know and made the Microsoft one, Microsoft being that same same illiterate. We can also use examples of athletics. Athletics like LeBron James. He's a famous basketballer. He, he was illiterate, yet he now is what he made, he got out of poverty. You can use your own talents and skill like him. His skill was bas basketballing. We can also use a famous Run, a famous athlete. We can keep jogging. We all know him. He was from Kenya. He was illiterate, but he is now. He is now rich. We can also use and utilize our talents so that we can get out of poverty. Like using your talents, like through and like famous people, like singers, like Willie Paul. He was illiterate, but now he is one of the famous people who are being rich. So I don't see, I don't see the point of proposing this motion that financial literacy should be used as a tool to eliminate poverty. Hence, we should join hands and say, and oppose this motion that financial literacy can be used as a tool to eliminate poverty. Cannot help we should oppose this motion that financial literacy can be used as a tool to eliminate poverty. Any question from the audience? I have a question to the opposers. You're talking about uh, a president going to China for benchmarking. How sure you is going for benchmarking? He could be going for a vacation for a line. Uh, and another question is uh, 
You're talking about Somalia has 15% people who are literate, adults, you, insist, you insisted that it's adults. Imagine the potential if we added the people who are, who are to, to increase the percentage of people who are literate. So that would make them to develop faster. And also, you did bring out your points for the second proposal. I didn't, the only, the only word I got on Bill Gates being poor, being illiterate, and LeBron James being poor. I, I didn't understand anything. Thank you. I would like first to comment on the opposer. You have said that Bill Gates is illiterate, yet he studied at the Harvard University. How can it be? Are you sure that he's, he's illiterate? And LeBron James, although he's a basketball player, how sure are you that he did not go to school because actually he has a degree? He has a degree in in law, law something, law and something there, but actually, I will actually, I would like you to explain further on the issue of illiteracy, because actually we don't know what you mean, maybe it is in the study of business, and, but illiteracy, when you define illiteracy, you remember that there are many types of illiteracy. Thank you. Benchmarking in China, but let me ask, you go for benchmarking at some point. So you may tell me you go for benchmarking just to see where the school is. Of course, you must get some benefits from benchmarking in that school you are going to. So I don't understand why you are discouraging benchmarking. So you are saying that the CS is going budget, but you still don't see the benefits of budgeting. I, even the teachers in the room are with us. Some of the fees is paid by the government, right? It is paid by the government. Some of your fees is paid by the government. So how can you say that budgeting does not give benefits to, to us? You say that Somalia has 15% financial literacy. And you say that Kenya has 32. But instead, Kenya is developing more than Somalia. So you're contradicting yourself. Explain further. You say that, okay, there you are facing a point, you are saying that we are supposed to eradicate financial literacy. So can you please try to bring us into the box that you are trying to tell us? Thank you. Any question to the proposers? To the opposers. Hmm. Financial literacy is the bridge that connects dream to reality, potential to opportunity, and ambition to achievement. The words of Queen Maxima of Netherlands, and as you all know from your geography studies, that Netherlands is a first world country. Men, ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you to advocate a fundamental principle that lies at the heart of economic progress and social advancement. As we venture into the complexities of the modern world, one truth becomes increasingly clear. Nobody wants poverty. Standing before you is Caleb Jao from the Kagumo High School to strongly assent the motion that states financial literacy can be used as a tool to eliminate poverty. I was seated on this chair and I felt it really bitter to ensure a tongue lashing by these beautiful ladies. But however, I would like to deny some of the facts which clearly might be a mistake due to their probably lack of listening skills. First of all, we clearly stated that financial literacy can be used as a tool. We did not say it is the main thing that can be used to eliminate poverty. We said it was a tool. So please, get the difference. Understand the motion. The second thing, you said that Bill Gates, LeBron, and Kipchoge, they have not gotten any studies. A 
has clearly stated Bill Gates went to the Harvard University and he got a, a nice education there. Uhuru Kenyatta, one of the greatest leaders that we have in today, has studied accounting abroad. And then he would come and convince me that somehow these people who have made it in life do not learn anything about saving and budgeting. You want to tell me that somebody like Bill Gates can just go out there and decide because I have money, let me purchase, let me purchase the entire of this school. Because I have money, let me go and purchase the entire for market. No, because he understands the fundamentals, which are budgeting. He knows if I spend money in this way, I might make a loss. Look at one of the greatest and admired pioneers that in, in the field of, um, of uh, aeronautics and space science that we have today. A billionaire, Elon Musk. Look at Elon Musk. He's an entrepreneur. You all know him. A billionaire. He's making millions out there. You want to tell me that? Elon Musk does not know anything about investing. You want to tell me that Elon Musk does not know anything about saving and budgeting? And what are those we're talking about? The fundamentals of financial literacy. Is it not true? We are talking about the fundamentals. If you do not know anything about saving and budgeting, how can you be able to advance from that poverty stricken state you are in? Look at it. You talked about Somalia being financially illiterate. That's one I will not deny. It is a fact, according to the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, published in the year 2019. But also, allow me to quote something that, according to a journal published by The Lancet in the year 2018, it shows that these low income communities, it is not a decision of them to, that they are poor. They have the money, yes. They do have the money, they have a lot of resources in their country, but the thing is that they lack the proper ways on how to divest those resources. Look at a country like the Democratic Republic of Congo, a vast country that has rich resources. It is very rich in its own resources. And then you want to come and tell me that those guys don't do anything. Those guys are poor just because they, that, that, that they do not need financial literacy. If only they knew how to use their resources, if only they knew how to use their the advantage and take advantage of what they have in their land, if only they come to understand that we have diamonds, we have oil, we can sell it and improve the lives of the impoverished families we have today in, in, in this Africa. We can be able to change the world at home. Therefore, I don't think this is up for debate. It is clear as day that we need financial interest to eliminate poverty. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Blessing Jerry Joroge from the Great School of St. Angela Kereni Girls. I strongly oppose the motion that states that finance. Sorry. I strongly oppose the motion that states that financial literacy can be used as a tool to eliminate to eliminate poverty. I would like to answer the first question. A point of correction. We were not the one who said that presidents go to, the, to other countries for, benchmark, for benchmarking. Instead, it was our proposers. The second question. We did not mean that Bill Gates was totally illiterate. Yet, we meant that he he is not illiterate, but he did not finish or conclude his education. But he is one of the richest people in the world. And he formed the Microsoft. So we did not mean that Bill Gates was totally illiterate. The one who asked, who asked us to explain further on illiteracy. So, illiteracy depends on education. It depends on where you conclude your education. So, you have to be financially literate. You, you don't have to be financially literate. Yet, there are other ways of coming out of poverty, e.g. providing people with water and educating children. Economic, 
security. According to the quarter.com in 2022, is 393 children and adults who are helped through empowerment of education. My dear friends, let's join hands and oppose the motion that states that financial that financial literacy cannot can be used as a tool to eliminate poverty. Hence, my my proposals, let's join together and oppose this, this motion. Remember, as I conclude, remember there is hell in hello and devil in the revolution. I rest my case. Thank you very much. The first pro the proposals will have one minute for your punch. The year is 2024. And the SDGs published by the United Nations clearly stated that in the number one goal is no poverty. Come on, let's be real here. We are talking about no poverty. No poverty. No poverty, we can, some of the ways you can use it by creating jobs. Creating jobs, they are given money, they are paid salaries, right? You don't work for free. We pay them salaries, they get money. Where does that money go? Will you throw it down the drain? Spend a night in the bar or two? Or do whatever you want to do with it? You must learn how to budget. You must learn how to save. You're a man, you're a woman, or probably you're, you're, you've just completed your school. You have money, but you do not know how to use it. A famous quote by... Um, a famous quote by Adam Smith, a 19th century economist uh, of Scotland, clearly stated that the problem with the future generations to come is that they will not know anything about budgeting, saving, and investment. Go ahead, use your money the way you want to, but in the end of it all, you keep on complaining to us that you did nothing to help you to get you out of that poverty stricken state. While we try to educate you to use your money well, we try to educate you on how to use the funds that you have. You came and insulted us, claiming that you do not need financial interest. Think about it, and we will see where Africa will be the next 10 years to come. Thank you. Oh my. By. An attitude is just like a plantain. It cannot move unless you change it. Why do you have that attitude? Like for example, you want to tell me that financial literacy is true education, right? You know literacy, right? You all know the meaning of literacy, right? It's when you know something. And so that for you to know it, you, you, you want to tell me, why do you go to school? Do you go to Joy Life? You go to school because your parents is like, oh, everyone in the village has gone to school, so let me just take you. I'm using this point to show you that you people, you are thinking that financial literacy, it can change poverty. Do you think it's the, no, it's not the only point, just as you told us. But, let me give you a point. You have also said that creating of jobs, according to business, we have learned that skilled and unskilled people can be it doesn't depend that in all education literates, liter literacy, it depends on creativeness of jobs, but also do you think of your talent when you're nurtured well, you'll be able to discover it. By running, athletics is a talent, singing is a talent, but those people aren't. So you don't get why. You are pushing this. You're pushing this motion to an extent where it's not understandable. I rest my case, and it's that simple. Thank you. Now let's hear from our judges. Buru, you are a good debater, but once again, please use your research. If you have done research, use that material to argue. The same applies to SOPI. We also want you to use the research that you have done and tell us where you put that from. 
to receive my message to you, especially for this debate, is that you need to be more, just try to be more convincing. I know at times it becomes very hard to talk to uh, an audience that does not seem to agree with you, but just try to be more convincing. That is possible if you are giving us your source of information. Silence for the results. Good afternoon. The results are out for the junior category finals and Kagumo High School have 79.5%, Kirene girls have 72.8%. A clap for the two teams.